All right, we've had a look at what impacts the business needs to understand is happening in their company. And uh, we talked about that Planet Equipment Wellness is all about the how to do things, because it's the how to find the one best way that we're looking to achieve. Planet Equipment Wellness is built around a particular, I guess, business model. And uh, the whole point uh, is to understand what the business has to do to make the machines reliable by making the parts reliable. So this model we use is the stress to process models. Parts stress to business process. What processes do we develop, uh, design, develop and install that will reduce the stress on the parts? When I reduce stress, I naturally get reliability. So my upside down triangle here is all about understanding that we're going to begin at the bottom. Parts, uh, part by part in our equipment, the parts that are at high risk, we're going to find those. We know that the stress is induced from only two ways. One is the distortion caused by poor installation or forces going in the wrong places. The other is by degradation, the bad use of the equipment, the misunderstanding of the correct way to use that machine. So degradation management is an operational issue, distortion management, management is an installation and maintenance issue. So right away we're into a scenario where the two teams are going to work together across the business cycle to deliver low stress parts. We also want our guys to solve the problems. When there's a failure, learn from that, improve the machine. The Japanese say a new machine is in the worst condition it should ever be because when you have a machine, you learn what it needs to be done to it to be a better machine, and you do those things. So we have this configuration, parts stress rolling up to business process. And the whole point up here is to install the how, the one best way to achieve this result. So as I learn what needs to be done, I roll it up into procedures, into documentation, into company policy, into company practices, into company training, and lock it into the system with ACE three T's, built around the ISO 9001 framework. So I wanted to go through this in a, in a bit more detail, just to explain the sense of approaching it that way. If I start at the top and build my business processes without understanding what their outcomes will be, and if the outcomes are meant to be reliability and low maintenance cost and high operation uptime, and I start from the top here, how how do I know what, what the pathway is? I can build the business process that I think is okay from this level here, and I'll fight you to death to follow my process. But the point is it's never right. It can't be right because you've built at this level without understanding that the outcomes will produce what you actually want. So I turn the whole thing upside down and say, what do we really want? Well, we really want to have no failing machines. We want to have no failure. We want to have no risk of failure. We want to make sure we do the right things that ensure it is always reliable. So what are the right things to do? Well, distortion prevention, degradation prevention. Remove the cause of failure. Who does that? Well, operations guys can manage operational stresses. My maintenance guys can handle uh, installation and correction of, of failure problems. Um, how do we do that? Well, we write procedures. Operational precision uh, ACE 3 procedures. Installation ACE 3 procedures. And maintenance strategies, well, yes, we're going to have strategies, precision maintenance, preventative maintenance, predictive maintenance, done the right way. But what is the right way? Well, the how will be described. We're going, to dis we're going to explain exactly how to get a tight distribution at every single step, for every single job, for every single person, for every single process. How else can you do it? I'm going to script the movie. I want a movie where in five years' time we are the world leaders, everybody's out there having a great time, building a fantastic company. Let's make a movie. What part do you play? Well, I'm the fitter. How do you assist? Well, yeah, I, I, I make machines better. I make them more reliable. Great. What do you do? Well, I haven't got the script yet. Oh, let me, let's write the script together. This is what you do. Learn the script. Let's now make the world a stage. Let's become the actors that create this company that we all want to get into. And this is the how we do that. So we roll up from stress into the activities required. Um, we involve our suppliers if need be. We know that a lot of problems are coming in from outside the gate. They're being given to us. We're going to have to go and control that. And if lean practices produce better results, I'm not going to wait 
a year or two, I'm going to start getting that in tomorrow. I need a quality system. I need a, a, a documented system that is the one best way that everybody in the company can access and can improve. And up here, we then have the processes of the company. Yes, human uh, capability management, the HR guys play a part. So when they hire somebody, can this guy deliver this? Does he know anything about precision maintenance? Well, don't hire him because I want to get a guy that can precision maintain. But there's nobody out in the marketplace. Well, find the best guy, we'll put him through the school. We'll teach him what to do. Uh, knowledge management, what's the important knowledge that prevents parts failure? Well, that not, we know that, yeah, we, we worked it out. So now the guys that are doing the uh, business process improvement, we can say, hey, are we doing the right things? You're business process guys, and are we doing the right things that produce this? No, we're not yet. Okay, well, improve the business. In what way? Well, we're going to achieve these outcomes. So that's the idea of the stress to process. Parts stress to business processes that produce these outcomes. And so we roll up to do the right things. And we know what the right things are because we worked out here in our detailed analysis, in our, in our um, reliability center, in our reliability cause analysis uh, requirements, we know what we have to do. Now I'm gonna do those things intentionally make it part of the business processes and lock them into place with the ACE three Ts. So yes, uh, and everybody's involved of course, this is business wide and life cycle wide up here. So it'll be forever more that we do these things and we challenge ourselves to always bring that tolerance and bring that in tighter and tighter and tighter. Because as we get better and better and better and hold our quality more accurately, the better the results, the more certain the results will be. Again, uh, being the end of, uh, towards the end of the course, I'm, I want to have some summary type concepts. So again, a, a single picture of, of I guess, the, the idea behind what Plant Wellness is trying to achieve for the company. So begin with our parts, parts list, which, are the, which parts are at risk? Uh, where will the stress come from on these parts? Is it a problem? Does it matter if this part breaks? If it doesn't matter, it's fine. But if it matters if that part breaks, how do we prevent it from failing? I don't want to repair it. I don't mind maintaining it to ensure it has uh, the right environment that it lives in, but I want to minimise my, my failures. So we recognise what stresses are being caused. We know um, across the life cycle of that equipment when it's being used, there'll be wear out issues, there'll be intentional ageing by its use, there'll be stress induced problems, and there'll be human error. And I've got to address all of those. Which ones are worth addressing? Which ones are, are where the payback is? Well, it depends if these things reduce the risk of the breakdown. If they reduce the risk and there's money in doing this, let's do it. If there's no sense, no value, no point, let's not do it. But again, the, the risk and the dollars gained from that risk reduction action is what makes it worthwhile for us to do that. From all that analysis, we come up with our, our processes that will be in place in the business, whether it's maintenance operations, whether it's um, corporate wide, whether it's engineering. So that's how we end up populating these levels here. All that information, that learning, those requirements, the standards, the quality controls, the ACE3Ts roll on up right across our business and across our suppliers and perhaps even across our customers. Because if our customers can tell us hey, if you did it this way, we'd buy, we'd like that better. Um, it might be smart to listen to the customer and bring the better idea into our business. So yes, yeah, just a one pager of, of the concept. Um, in a company that hasn't done this yet, that's a fair bit of work. It's, it's not gonna be easy to do. So we don't wanna tackle the whole company at once. It's just a mountain, it's beyond us. We wanna do this in a test area, in a section of plant, a particular asset, or even a small part of a small operating plant that, that's a, a reasonable size to work with. We don't want to take years to get to this level uh, to prove it actually works. We want to do this in a few months to be able to do the input analysis, to make the decisions, do the justification financially, work out what processes to improve and change and document within a reasonable time to then apply this, make it work, see how it works, ensure our data is confirming this improvement in quality and sustaining the, the distribution, then we have real evidence in our customer's workplace that this stuff works for them. Once we've got 
it working on one, we snowball it to number two, then number three, and hopefully eventually it's clear that it needs to go business-wide very, very fast.